Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we are talking all about IP claims, Amazon, the law, and we have a very special guest. He is an Amazon seller turned lawyer turned author. He has extensive, impressive background creating and selling a lot of Amazon private label brands. And he specializes at his firm in intellectual property law, legal services provided to Amazon third party brands and sellers just like you and me. And he has re recently wrote a book and he's here to talk all about that. So I can't wait to introduce you to Mario. But first, I want to remind you that just last week, we dropped a brand new product. Yes, it's called Done For You Bundles. Yes, I, the bundle queen, am creating bundles for you. Why? Because I can't help myself. I love bundles. I love to create bundles. I have so many bundle ideas I don't know what to do with. And students have reached out and they were like, hey, why can't you create bundles for us? I mean, you're so good at it. Why not? And my store is already fully stocked to the point where we're good to go with what we have in our store. So I, I've been just creating bundles over and over. Now, this is an application only process. So if you are qualified, you are ready to buy a done for you bundle. What does that mean? That means that you get a fully vetted, fully researched, copy paste bundle that you can order products and put them right on Amazon. I give you the listing, copy and paste, the images, the title, bullet points, fully researched, vetted. All you have to do is buy a done for you bundle, copy and paste the listing into Amazon, order the products, have them shipped up, bundled either by a prep center or yourself and ship them off to Amazon. No research, no vetting the product, no deciding if this is what you want to invest in. We give you the cost of goods. We give you the suggested retail price. We give you the order numbers, the vendors everything done for you. So if you're interested in applying for a done for you bundle, mommyincome.com forward slash done for you bundle, and you can apply right there. So now we are going to jump into talking about intellectual property. And I want to welcome to the show, Mario. Hi, Mario. It's so good to have you here. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you could join us for this week's episode of the Amazon Files. Mario, how are you? Doing well. How are you doing, Kristen? I am fabulous. Well, we're going to get right into this. Everyone is just dying to know, uh, what do you have to do with Amazon? And why are you on the Amazon Files? So what is your Amazon journey? Sure. So uh, I started selling while I was still in law school. In my second year of law school, everyone was sort of going out, finding jobs, and doing all that and I was like I don't have time to actually get a job and even earlier in my career I think just in my life I was always involved in business and had my business instead of sort of having a job I, I did have jobs but it was mostly my own businesses so I didn't know what to do and I came across a uh, a YouTube video I think I was looking for like work at home opportunities and Ryan Daniel Moran I still remember um, he's actually still around. Um, he had a video about doing drop shipping and all that. And this is maybe like 10 years ago or so. I was like, this looks interesting. I've always had a fascination for sort of importing. So this was like, oh my God, this may be the perfect opportunity. So I, um, uh, I ordered some products, private label, and then, um, it was kitchenware. It was, uh, first product was, I don't know if you remember, Kristen, they're still around like three in one avocado cutter uh splitter and then what else was it yeah I, but three and one so did that um uh, fast forward built the brand started another brand so at the time we had two brands i say we but it was really me um finished law school at the time everyone's like well what are you going to do when are you going to start working for a law firm i was like i'm still enjoying what i'm doing because back then uh you've been selling for a while you know back then everyone looked at selling on amazon like if you were going to garage sales or yard sales, purchasing stuff and then selling it online. And I'm, that's not what we were doing. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to get into law yet. I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm doing and I'm seeing um, a lot of success here. So time came where I no longer had a passion for, for the brands that I had. It was like kitchenware and, and, uh, and cookware. And um, so I sold the first brand and then sold the second brand and then got married. And I was like, okay, what do I do now? And it just seemed like the perfect intersection between law and Amazon. So now we represent Amazon third-party sellers anytime they have issues against the marketplace itself 
or other competitors who may not be playing fair. And here I am now. That's awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. I know, you know, I love what you said there, because although you might have had a direction and like, oh, I went to law school, graduated, did this thing. I love what you said. I was just enjoying what I was doing. So instead yeah. of filing some cookie cutter plan for your law life, you're like, hey, I'm going to hang out in this Amazon playing field for a while. And uh, I love how you referenced, you know, the thrifting and things, because although that is how I started way back in the day on eBay and then eventually Amazon, it's a completely different beast than what people used to, used to think and didn't really take seriously even still to this day people are like are you still doing that amazon thing and i'm like yeah that amazon thing <laughs> right <laughs> 20 years later i'm like yeah so uh, i love how you referenced that too because it, it did especially years ago that was like the mentality people didn't necessarily know the difference between like ebay was more of those vintage you know antique one-off kind of things and amazon just became more of what it is now which is everything for everyone as much as they could you know starting with books and then kind of moving forward so um thanks for sharing your journey there so um you were doing law school and then Amazon and then continued Amazon, but then back to law, right? So tell us about your law degree. Were you always in uh, the intellectual property when you first started law or did you specialize in something else and change to this? No, I'm, I like even in law school, I never took a course on IP. It was all, I always knew from a young age that I either wanted to be in business or work for businesses or help businesses, right? So this seemed like just a perfect avenue for me to work with entrepreneurs. So that's really what we are, right? And that's who we work with. Mm -hmm. And Amazon and IP was just my path to, to get there, to work with these, uh, with these uh, Amazon sellers and with these entrepreneurs. And, and I just want to go back to what you said about people sort of taking this seriously. I was talking to a friend and I think people really started taking this seriously the public itself was when Thraftio and these other aggregators came into the picture and now brought billions of of, uh, of dollars and started purchasing these brands for ridiculous amounts of money, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's when the public itself looked at it like, what's going on here, right? So I think that's when it, that's when uh, when the shift may have occurred was at that time. But yeah, uh, going back to your question, I I never looked at IP. Um, at least in life school, I never looked at IP as sort of my next step. It just happened that way. Did it happen because of anything you experienced while being an Amazon seller and a brand builder? Are there things that you ran into that were like, wow, this is really a problem that needs to be solved for some sellers? You know, as as you're building a brand, you're importing, you're doing private label. There's a lot of liabilities and a lot of things that come with that. So with with that being said, did it come out of a necessity to fill that need for sellers? It, it was sort of I wish I knew now what I did before, mm -hmm. right? Or, or I wish uh, I knew back then what I know now. So one of the products, so during my Amazon selling journey, I got pretty cocky and I ordered four or five big rolls of artificial grass. And I was like, okay, I get it. And I realized after I got the rolls, I was like, I can't sell this on Amazon. And this is the time where here in LA, um, I think it was LA County or the state of California was giving out um, sort of grants or at least reimbursing homeowners who replace their lawn with artificial grass. So I realized that I need to put it on Craigslist. I put it on Craigslist and Chris and I sold one roll and it was just a complete nightmare. I don't even think I made money on that roll and I had to uh, rent a van. I had to go get some help from the, from the local Home Depot and then drive it and deliver it to my customer who purchased it off of, off of Craigslist. And it was just a nightmare. I was like, forget it. I'm not going to do that again. I'm not even making money. Mm -hmm. So those roles, the remaining roles stay there for a couple of months until one morning, morning I'm, I'm looking at these and, and I'm just having my morning coffee, looking at these roles. And I was like, what do I do? And it just sort of struck. I was like, you know what? I'm going to cut these up and make doormats. And we were the first company to actually do that. Now, I wish I knew how IP could help protect it, right? Get some sort of design patent or some sort of trade dress on it. It would help protect that I would maybe have a huge empire right there because there's a lot of other sellers doing that right now. So one of the reasons is that, right? It's like, I wish someone was there to sort of help me and guide me because that, that would have been a huge opportunity. Number two, I think anytime you're in business, 
IP has to be there, right? Whether we realize it or not, each of us own IP. Whether we realize it, whether we register it, that's a separate question. Mm -hmm. But all of us own IP. I think a lot of people, uh, of course, not your viewers, because they're all very educated and, and know a lot about IP, but just the general public, they look at IP and they really think about patents where there's a lot more, right? Trademarks, copyrights, and patents, even patents we're talking about, design patents and utility patents. But the sort of the uh, the stepchild of IP is trade secrets. And every company has trade secrets. Now you can't really register trade secrets, but we all have it. Every company has it. You have it, I'm sure, in your course, right? Absolutely. So, <laughs> so I, I think anytime you're talking about business, IP has to be there. Absolutely. And I think people don't realize like a lot of people now, especially now that Amazon is becoming a lot more um, stringent on their branding policies. I see, you know, even as of today's date, I see in the very near future, them updating policies that are written that are more visual and describe what they are going to accept as, as far as what branding is. Um, and I keep encouraging everyone to go to the brand registry, to get a trademark, to protect themselves, even if your company is called a APX2, you know, mercantile, who cares? Yeah, like you yeah. can still protect that for means of your listings, your images, what you're creating. Cause here at mommy income, we do have those trade secrets and how yeah. we're teaching people to build what I consider an Amazon brand. Meaning I don't want to take this brand to target or best buy or have it some be some household name, but I want it to be well represented online on Amazon. I want it to be associated with a specific quality and a specific style. And as people, are learning to do this and the layman can now actually build brands without i mean i would say even 20 years ago um it would have been very very difficult to find a place that would manufacture a small run of retail quality packaging for example and now it's at our fingertips so so much is changing so rapidly and i think people need to really understand that no matter what they're creating whether they think it's not a big deal or not or it's just this little thing i threw together you never know i mean you had a brand that you were like oh this really took off you could have been a billionaire with your you know um welcome mats that are made out of turf <laughs> um but still like we we don't know what we don't know but now that we are now that people are coming here uh taking the time to file that trademark or even uh registering somewhere i know you mentioned trade secrets or even copyright you know our images that we're putting on online are, are not a free-for-all and so mm -hmm. people need to really um, think about what they're protecting even if it's i'm gonna sell on amazon for a small brand and maybe for five years and then I'm going to sell it and retire, uh, you still, that's an asset. I think what people don't realize too, this is an asset. It's not just another piece of paperwork that you're going to do to kind of get a trademark or protect your intellectual property. It's if you ever go to sell, transfer, exit, you have this intangible asset that you can leverage and say, hey, I've got a trademark. It's a recognizable brand. It's got a website. It's got, you know, assets. So I think a lot of smaller businesses that maybe are just dipping their toes into e-commerce don't even consider consider themselves a business enough to protect yeah. themselves. Yeah. And, and I think what's funny and what I tell my clients is if you're not getting a trademark, you're sort of betting against yourself. Now, what does that mean? A trademark is protecting the reputation of your brand, right? That's really what it is. And again, even if, if it could be a weird name like X squared merchant, right? Now, if you're not getting a trademark to protect your brand name, you're saying, you know what, I'm, I'm not really taking this seriously. But what happens in a year, two years, five years, if the business really starts taking off? To register it at that time usually becomes a lot more complicated or can get more complicated, right? So if you're not getting it, you're sort of saying, you know what, I don't think this business is going to do well. That's why I don't want my trademark, right? So that's how I always explain it to clients is if you're not getting a trademark, you're sort of betting against yourself and saying, I don't think this business is going to succeed. Mm. Why start in the first place? I love that perspective. Yeah, because you're really just, I, I call it this investment. It's just another piece of the business puzzle, puzzle. You go, you get a business bank account, you get an oh. LLC, you get an EIN number, and you get a trademark. I think some of the people's problems that I'm, the clients that I'm hearing at least is that 
they're willy nilly a little bit about picking their brand name or their trade name or they're they, they're feeling like they're well i sell baby products and auto parts what kind of store is this like you know and it's online so we don't have to have that demographic of this is my brick and mortar oh, store and we can no. you know but i'm not walmart so what do i do and and so i've in my training i do teach people how to pick a brand that's kind of general but kind of strange a little bit you know like like the the trademark office loves things like blue bananas you know something that's like completely different that doesn't you know not going to cause any confusion in the marketplace or you know an acronym of some sort that means something to you whatever it is but even having just a simple word mark cost even in one class even if you do goods or services whatever that is 250 dollars an hour of your time and what five years or more of a trademark protection so yeah. uh, it's such a small thing. Now, what about let's let's shift into intellectual property as a violation. Like, so you're on Amazon, you're selling, and say you list something, and all of a sudden you're hit with this IP claim. How valid are some of these versus like dirty competitors are just trying to get strikes against you? Yeah, it wouldn't really depend. I mean, some violations we see they are valid, right? And just because they're valid doesn't mean we can't help out or you don't have a defense. So that's the valid. Um, as as far as competitors playing dirty, I mean, we've seen the worst of it. Um, one of the clients we were helping, um, their one of their competitors, ironically enough, they were both selling religious uh, religious items, and their competitor reported them for copyright infringement. And these were completely bogus claims, right? So we took the case to Amazon's outside uh, law firm, outside attorneys. We dealt with them and we said, look, this is completely bogus. And they agreed, right? So they said, okay, you know what? Since this is so um, sort of extreme situation where they had filed dozens per day violations, they said, we'll go ahead and suspend this other seller's ability to file IP complaints against your client. So like, great. Everyone's celebrating. Client's super excited. He's thinking, you know what? I can get back to business and don't have to worry about fighting this other competitor. About two, three weeks go by and uh, the story is not done. The competitor enrolled the help of his sister to file these complaints. So now the sister's filing complaints. We go back to Amazon. They get the sister's ability completely suspended to file IP complaints against our client. Again, we're like, okay, we may be good now. Competitor then enrolls the help of the mother-in-law. We get that suspended through Amazon's help. At the end, it, it sort of came to the point where he had his attorney filing these bogus complaints. So that's a big no-no, right? We as attorneys have certain ethical obligations and responsibilities. So that's a big no-no. So we were, we told the client like, look, I mean, I don't know what else we could do. And we don't want to sort of just continue billing you. Like maybe it's better if you just file a lawsuit, right? So that, that I would consider an extreme situation as far as how stubborn some of, and how dirty some of these competitors can be, right? But most of them, I mean, they'll just file it here and there and sort of, as long as you take care of it, they'll sort of go away for the most part. But obviously the most, more competitive product niche you're in, then the more dirty or more aggressive these competitors are going to be. But in the, um, I'm I'm not sure how competitive um, you, um, or product areas your, uh, your customers are or your clients are. But for the most part, I mean, whether it's valid or not, you still have a defense and there's still ways around it. I think that most of my clients, because of the the way that I teach them to set up and do bundles, we don't generally have any issues with IP. I tell them, stay away from big brands. Don't put these things in your bundles. You know, we're creating, um, you know, meeting needs and solving problems with, you know, combined products. That's what we do with wholesale bundles. And I've always been telling people, that, like, bundles are not a way to get around people's IP or Amazon's restricted products. I mean, if a company does not want you listing their products on Amazon, then move on there's yeah. go to a trade show you will see millions of products for sale at bit if this guy doesn't want to sell you this go to the next person they'll sell it to you that you know so so people i think are just so dead set on some of these big brand names and they have to you know try to get competitive and they're fighting for pennies i'm like no we don't teach that it's like just bring value uh do things the right way you know a lot of people they just don't want to work these days people don't want to yeah. work they want to do things the easy way but the easy way you know also can get you in big trouble because a lot of that's a lot of you know backdoor black hat ways of doing things you know i always think of the the scenario you're talking about here with this dirty client and how are that they're dirty competitor, dirty competitor and how they have now the 
the person, then the sister, then the mother-in-law, then the attorneys. I'm like, if they would have spent half of that energy just building new products, they would have been billionaires. Like, why are you so worried about this guy over here? You know, so I always think about that when it comes to criminals or bad actors. And like, you've got smarts and, and intelligence enough to create this, you know, yeah. this scheme, like, why not use that for good? I don't know. That's just my, no, my soapbox. No, no, I, no, I absolutely agree. And that's exactly what me and the client were talking about. It's like, how much time is this person spending on creating these copyrights, filing it with the copyright office, getting the registration and then filing complaints against you, right? Yeah. Like you could have done so much more with your life right. you exactly. for evil, you know? So I, I agree with you Yeah. What are some key ways people can kind of uh, either respond and or protect themselves from this type of, you know, either competitors or just, you know, maybe the people that just don't want to step on anyone else's toes. I mean, a lot of times it happens, oh, I didn't know any better. I didn't know any different. And what are some key uh, things we can do to avoid problems? Sure. And I, and I think just, just so we're clear, I mean, you're in business. Well, one way or another, one day or another, you may face issues like this and just know that it's okay. You know, it just means now you're playing at a, at a, at a bigger level or at a higher level, right? But otherwise, I would say any photo, since you guys are bundling, it's sort of a, a no-brainer, but you take all of your photos, right? Yeah. And if you can have someone else take it, make sure you have a work for hire agreement. For example, if you were to hire me, a professional photographer, to take photos of, of your uh, bundles, Kristen, then you would want an agreement for me. And most professional photographers will have that saying, you know what, even though I took these photos, you are the owner of these photos. You own the copyright. So that'd be number one that would take care of copyrights. As far as the trademark, make sure you've got your own trademark. And on the Amazon listing, you're not putting a, a major uh, brand name on there. Put your own brand name, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm that's exactly what I'm teaching when people do bundles. You're creating your own trademark, your own trademark brand, and then you're combining products that are meeting a need and solving a problem for the customer. They make sense together, they go well together, and you're not stepping on anyone else's brand because you don't need to. I mean, there's so many products on Amazon we type in every day. I, I this is a challenge I always tell people if they're like, Oh, you know, only big brand stuff sells. I was like, open your phone and look at the last 10 or 20 things that you purchase and yeah. how many of them are or household brand names that you you would know of. I mean, some of them are, but then some of them you look like you're like, I was like HDMI cord, blue tarp for the, you know, such and such, like, you know, just these different things, a pack of white socks that are some oh. unknown brand, you know, things like that. So we don't, we don't really, we say that, but then that's just fear talking. It really is Agreed. so many thousands of brands. Great. I, I really love that exercise. That's actually really good. Yeah. Um, patents, um, if, if there's a patent, they should have a marking on it, meaning either on the listing, it should say patented or patent pending or patent number or on the product itself, right? So if there's a patent, stay away from that too. But I don't imagine much much of your or many of your customers selling patent things. I think the main issue that they may face is with trademarks, right? Yeah. Or getting claims like, you know, you're using something, you know, because you're allowed to on Amazon, the, the policies state that you're allowed to combine multiple brands into one package. Now, for example, I always use like the Hangry Kit is a brand where it's basically just a bo box of a bunch of mixed snacks. So you want to send, you know, a college care package or something to someone It's just a bunch of miscellaneous box full of snacks, but they use major brands in the snacks, you know, so you're looking at Nature Valley and Oreo and, you you know, cheese its and things like that in this box. And so that's when things come in and brands might have a problem if they see that. But the brand itself is the hangry kit and they put multiple things in there. So the, that's where the waters get a little muddied when it comes to um, bundling because a lot of people want to list the your, your Amazon rule states you're supposed to list everything that's in there. It's supposed to be identical and exact. And that, you know, starts to cause problems with branding when you're like, oh, cheese its and Oreos and this and this and this and this. But then it's this hangry kit so what do we do um and so reading the policies and, and and paying attention to those things really understand that like they don't the main point is not to cause customer confusion you know i'm not saying every single thing in the box is made by oreo it's just that uh, this is a hangry kit full of multiple items so their biggest concern is customer satisfaction at amazon and so if you're not satisfying the customer and there's brand confusion they'll pull your plug faster than anything yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, that was going to be my next point is familiarize yourself with Amazon's policies and put it in your calendar once a month or once every quarter 
go in and check, see if there's new policies, right? And I think you guys have a nice community where it's easier to do it, right? Where if someone finds out something, they can share with the rest of the group. Uh, that'd be my next point. And um, my, my sort of last piece of advice is if there's a toxic brand out there, right? And for example, Monsanto, right? If you've got seeds, I don't know if they sell seeds, but if you've got seeds from Monsanto and maybe a baby product, maybe that baby product, that brand doesn't want to be associated with that. So just be careful of that. Not very likely, but you never know. A brand now may become toxic to the public mm -hmm. next, right? So just be just be careful of that because the other brands may be concerned and say, you know what, Kristen, I don't want to be associated with that. I don't even want my product picture next to that toxic brand's products. So that'd be the next sort or last piece of advice that I'd give for you guys. But otherwise, I, I told you before, I love what you guys are doing. And that's why I wanted to be on here. I, I think what you guys are doing is amazing and really, really smart. Yeah, thank you. And again, like you guys are hearing it from an attorney, from someone who's also an Amazon expert and knows and understands these things. Like, this is why I teach you. Stop just trying to bundle two Hershey products together. Bundles are meant for customer satisfaction. That's yeah. Amazon's number one thing. And if it's your number one thing, we can all play nice together. But yeah. if it's not, then, you know, you're opening yourself up for trouble. And you did not hear this from Mommy Income. You did not hear this from saying that. Bundles are supposed to be specially curated and researched products that, that that meet a need or solve a problem for the customer in a way that also brings you know more economic packaging when you know we're using less clicks to purchase something when everything's kind of put together so that's what we're creating value for customers that's what a wholesale bundle is it's not a way to get around the rules let no. me say that again for the people in the back <laughs> this is not a way to get around rules or policies you are creating value for customers when you're creating wholesale bundles and that's why they work because the customer looks and he says, oh, thank you so much for putting this wonderful gift together that I can mid metal but send it off to my boss and be like, look, I got you a gift and I didn't have to do anything but buy it on Amazon. <laughs> you know, two day free shipping on things. Like the, the sky is the limit with the creativity here, but we have to be aware of policies, of other people's brands, of other people's copyrights. Um, because honestly, how would you feel if you took all this time to curate this brand and you're doing well and you're selling this product and you know, three days later you open Amazon and your next competitor has literally used your images in their listing and they're like, hi, I have the same one. No, we don't want that either, even how even if we're a small brand. So respect other people's IPs, uh, use your own, get your brand trademark. Anything else that you'd like to add? What did we miss? Can we go away from law for a minute? Sure, of course. Anything you want. Um, I was talking to a client the other day and I thought I would just share it with you guys. I thought it'd be helpful. I did get uh get his permission. But uh, what do you guys think about or, or what do you think about using Amazon KDP to sort of create the books and then also bundle the books there, right? And if you're creating a book, now this is copyright too. You're adding on additional IP. And anywhere you could add IP, I may be a bit biased, but I love it, right? So I just thought I would bring that question to you and see what you guys think. I love that you said that. Okay, so you're revealing a little bit of secret sauce and you don't even know that. Okay. Because <laughs> you're not you're not a student of wholesale bundles, but if you were, you might know Ooh. that a little bit of our proprietary trade secrets have to do with creating your own assets in KDP so that you can then order mm -hmm. those things on demand and put them into that. So we're talking about how to guide even smaller eBooks. Um, even if you're uploading eBooks and things like that, you still have that copyright. You you can have them put it in print, um, even as simple as um, like infographic style, black and white, here's a how to, that's really, really helpful for certain populations that don't um, speak English as their first language, or there's language barriers, or there's other sort of disabilities in a way of saying, hey, let's make this universal uh, and global. Uh, and so th that's definitely taught in there as well. And I love that idea because then you're owning, you, you have you have layers of ownership, right? Yeah. Anytime you can layer your assets and, and own, mo the more you own, <laughs> you know, the, the more you're worth. 
worth, right? You have more assets. If you have, you know, three or four, even blank journals. I have one client who uh, created something and then she's created like a blank journal with some prompts yeah, and yeah. that's what she prints out. She uses it for her bundle that goes along with some other uh, mindfulness resources. It's so fantastic. I love so, it. I love it. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that. So all you guys are listening. That's a little bit of secret sauce <laughs> inside the wholesale bundle system. And if you don't have it, mommyincome.com forward slash system. That is what you guys need to learn to do all of these things and do them what? Do them right. Do them above board. Do them legally. You guys are legitimate business owners. This is not, I mean, it can be a side hustle, but it's not intended to be. You are, Amazon's going to give you tax papers at the end of the year you're claiming your income. That is not a hobby. That is a business. So we want you to do it right so that you can earn really good money and keep that money. That's what some of the law problems that you have is that they want to take it from you once you've got it. So uh, it's a way to keep your money as well as just keeping keeping up on your policies and, and just keeping your nose clean, really. Yeah. And, and I really like that you say that this is a business, right? And Amazon gives you tax papers at the end of the year. They'll give you a 1099. And Amazon does treat you as a professional entrepreneur, as a serious business owner. Right. So anytime you're in trouble, it's not like they're looking at Amazon seller ABC and saying, oh, they just started. It's OK. No, they expect you to know what you're doing mm -hmm. and they expect you to take your business seriously because they're going to look at you seriously. Absolutely. Right? But yeah, I, I love, you know, I'm a big fan, Kristen. I've, I've told you before, but I'm a big fan of what you're doing. I really am. I'm a fan of what you're doing. And let's talk about that because you do have a new book that, that just came out. Tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, got a new book uh, and it, it was launched two weeks ago. So it's been about two weeks now. And it's something I've been working on for two years now mm -hmm. or close to two years, about 22 months. Right. And uh, finally got it out, completed it. And it is available on Amazon on the corner of IP and Amazon is what it's called. And um, I'll, I'll share a link with you uh, too. And I'll, I'll get you a hard, uh, hardcover copy. Oh, but really okay. it's, it's sort of beginner's guide about... Um, about IP, right? And what issues you may face on Amazon and how you may be able to resolve it. That's really what it's about. It's beginner's guide about IP. Is it going to tell you every complicated scenario about IP? No, but it'll give you a nice, good head start. And I felt like that's what was missing from the Amazon seller community, right? There's a lot of information here and there, but nothing sort of really, no pun intended, bundled into right. one package. <laughs> No. I love that. And thank you so much. And again, from one author to another, I highly respect your work. No matter what book anyone wrote, writing a book takes a lot of time and effort and vulnerability. So I appreciate you putting yourself into the world that way. Um, of course, I can't wait to get my copy. And you guys, there will be links below this video. Again, the book is called On the Corner of Amazon and IP. And you can get it on Amazon, hard copy. So, you know, is it uh, ebook and audible e and everything uh, ebook audible no not yet uh ebook soft cover and hardcover yay all right awesome well again mario thank you so much for your time and energy i know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing and i don't take that for granted so thank you for being on the amazon files y'all get the book keep your policies in order watch your ips get your brand registry and trademark and we'll see you same time same place next week on the amazon files